March 30th, 1981. It will go down as a tragic day in the history of the United States and the NCAA basketball championship. The celebration was marred with the news of the attempted assassination and wounding of President Ronald Reagan and three others. The NCAA decided to proceed with the finals once it was learned President Reagan's prognosis was excellent. It was a humbling day for everyone who was celebrating college basketball's biggest day. Bobby Knight had been here before. In 1976, here in the Spectrum, he won his first NCAA title. He compared his 76 squad with the 1981 team at a press conference the day before. The final result in 1976 was a very satisfying thing for all of us involved. It was sort of a culmination of a lot of work and a lot of effort on the parts of a lot of people. The satisfaction with this team uh, has come through watching it grow and develop. Many people were labeling this a Knight versus Smith confrontation, but Smith had his own observations. I don't believe it's ever one coach versus another coach. It's certainly a program versus another program, but more importantly, a student athlete of that particular school playing against the student athletes of the other school. Obviously, the players listen to the coach, and coaching does have something to do with any game. Two class teams led by classy All-Americas were ready to go. North Carolina's Al Wood and Indiana's Isaiah Thomas, teammates on the 1980 U.S. Olympic team, shared a lighter moment seconds before tip-off. North Carolina attacked Indiana's man-to-man -man defense and capitalized on its first trip down floor when James Worthy latched onto Jimmy Black's pass. Indiana had difficulty getting on track. Landon Turner hit two free throws, but it was over five minutes before the Hoosiers hit their first field goal on Steve Risley's tip-in off a missed drive by Thomas. Meanwhile, North Carolina had jumped to an 8-4 lead. Thomas calmly hit a picture jumper from the top of the key, and Indiana appeared to be getting things together. Indiana center Ray Tolbert tied the game at 8 with 13 minutes remaining in the half. North Carolina outscored Indiana in a little over three minutes, eight to nothing. Wood ignited the surge on this picture feed from Black and Perkins. The Hoosiers continued to have all sorts of problems. Black Steele set up an uncontested goal. And the Tar Heels were now up 12-8. Perkins made the score 14-8. And Wood showed early signs of duplicating his semifinal performance by putting Carolina ahead 16-8. Smith was cautious, but obviously enjoying his team's sudden strike. Following a timeout, Indiana regrouped. Turner hit two in a row, including a baseline jumper off Thomas's pass. North Carolina 16, Indiana 12. Jim Thomas came in when the Hoosiers were down 16 to 8. Combining with his namesake Isaiah, the two found Turner moments later, and that narrowed the score to 20 to 18, North Carolina. With just over five minutes to go in the half, Jim Thomas collected the rebound. Randy Whitman hesitated, but found the range to tie the score at 20. Worthy and Whitman each hit field goals to negate an advantage for either team. And then Wood spotted Worthy inside. It was a two-point Tar Heel advantage with a little more than four minutes left before halftime. A series of fouls in Carolina's control game spanned the next four minutes. North Carolina held a 26-25 lead when the Hoosiers took advantage of Whitman's hot hand. He dropped a bomb as the buzzer sounded. Indiana, 27. North Carolina, 26. aggressive defensive play and Indiana led 29 26 but the boys Tar Heels refused to be rattled worthy
Kelly lofted a perfect feed to Perkins, narrowing the margin to one. Smith provided the sideline support. After a Turner layup, Isaiah Thomas continued his All-America play, turned his second steal into another futile foot race. Indiana led 33-28 with just 90 seconds gone in the second half. Whitman put the Hoosiers up by seven at the 17-minute mark. Despite Indiana's aggressive intimidation, Wood dished off the black in the corner to reduce the lead to five. Indiana led 39-30 on Thomas's second straight basket. It was his eighth point of the Hoosiers' 12 in the second half. The Chicago natives seemed to be everywhere. North Carolina needed to cool off Indiana. The Hoosiers were six of seven from the floor in this half. Indiana maintained a deliberate, disciplined game. Jim Thomas spotted an opening for Turner. The Hoosiers were playing impeccably. Indiana, 41. North Carolina, 32. Black narrowed the margin to seven. Indiana was patiently putting on a clinic called Team Control. And Isaiah's mid-air antics, oh my! Carolina fans were frustrated, but had too much experience themselves with this style of play in Tar Heel country to berate the Hoosiers. With eight minutes remaining, North Carolina was having problems with Indiana's aggressive defensive play. Perkins went up for a two-pointer, missed, but Wood followed for only his second goal of this half. Indiana 45, North Carolina 38, the closest the Tar Heels would come for the remainder of the game. Things just weren't going right for Carolina Blue. Indiana was in control, and it became increasingly evident as the clock wound down. And Indiana was in no hurry to score. But when your team is playing textbook basketball, you can't pass up an opportunity. Right, Isaiah? Knight could sense his second national title. Make sure we've got an open shot going to the bucket. And then work my county With three and a half minutes to play, Isaiah Thomas was simply outstanding. He put the Hoosiers up by 12, 51-39. Indiana shot a brilliant 63% in the second half. Indiana had kept its Philadelphia magic alive with a 63-50 victory. There was certainly a surreal feel to the final deciding whether to play that game in the wake of the shooting of the president. On the court, Isaiah Thomas was the tournament's MVP. This was his last college game. He would leave school as a sophomore and sign with the Detroit Pistons of the NBA. It was Landon Turner's last game, too. That summer, Turner was paralyzed in an automobile accident, and it's been said that one incident kept Bob Knight at Indiana. Bob Knight had his second title and more challenges to face into the 1980s. We hope you've enjoyed our look back at 1981, the Philadelphia Final Four. I'm Bob Lee.